Hello friends, I am Achla Sharma, an assistant professor from Biani group of colleges. Today, we are going to start with our new topic on a new syllabus that is object-oriented programming language. As till now, before starting this language, you have been uh, introduced with many other languages like the basic Fortran, COBOL, a C language that is a procedure-oriented language. But due to some pitfalls in that languages, we have moved on to a new language that is the object-oriented programming language. As the name suggests, object-oriented programming language. Object that everything it is enclosed in an object. Fine, object we can think of uh, any real world entity like uh, a house, the name of a person, a name of a bank or building name, anything that has its properties and we can perform some functions over those properties. So, starting with those only, object oriented programming language, it is an approach that encapsulates all the objects and functions in a boundary and so that uh, we can operate on that functions and objects only. Initially, we used procedure oriented language. A simple difference between a procedure oriented language and an object oriented language is that procedure oriented language initially the focus was on how we are doing the things fine like what is the algorithm we write the entire procedure and then we run our program so focus was on how we are going to do the things but now we have an our emphasis on what is the data that we are operating upon rather than what is the procedure that we are following to uh, perform our operation Next, large programs, they are divided into smaller programs by the means of functions. We, uh, as you have already read in C, that large programs, uh, to, uh, to summarize those programs, we divide the entire program into multiple functions. That can be called at any time when we need that operation to be performed rather than writing that functions or that uh, procedure again and again into our program. So large programs, they were divided into smaller programs that we were calling as functions. But here, we are dividing the programs into objects. Fine. So that the entire focus is on object rather than what is the functionality. We operate on data rather than the logic of the program. Any data we are getting, we are performing the same logic and we will solve that complexity. Next, procedure language, it is a top-down approach. Means the main method that we are writing, the orientation of the program or the flow of the program that starts from the top end and that flows towards the bottom. But in object-oriented language, it follows the bottom-up approach. That means, firstly, we operate on the objects what are the objects of the program and then we focus on what we are calling upon fine next data move openly around the system because the data that are used in the function they are mostly the global data that are declared in the main method or above the main method through the global declaration and then we use them in our functions but here there is a concept in the further lectures we will uh, learn about the concept of data hiding means the entire data is built across around the functions and methods that we are using so a concept of data hiding is used in object oriented programming language next most functions they share the global data as we have discussed that the data are global that's why the data is moving freely across the whole program. Here, new data and functions can be easily added. Because we have made our object, how many functions we can add to the data easily add kar sakte hai, without disturbing the normal flow of the program. Objects, they communicate through the functions. There is no direct communication among the objects, but the only way to communicate through the functions only. In a simple terms, we can say that a procedure oriented language, this is our main program. Main program is divided into a number of functions and these functions, they are further divided 
and they even share some common properties as well. We have number of functions and they share some common properties among them. Okay, But in the case of object oriented language, the focus is never on the function but the focus is on the object and the collection of the data members that is the variables that we call in simple terms variables plus the member functions that, were, that we are using here they together made the object fine so how can we diagrammatically depict this is it is a complete object data is centralized and different methods or we can say different functions they operate on this data so the entire object is considered as a collection of data members and some member functions that operate on that data so here everything that we are performing it circles around an object only object ke ird ird hi hamari sari programming chalti hai kyunki jo hamari ab aage hum log jo further characteristics padhenge oops ki usme hamara first characteristics hoti hai hamari class second is the object without object object oriented programming language doesn't exist this was just the introduction about the object oriented programming language that we are going to study further so the features of the object oriented programming language or we can say the characteristics that will uh, that i will be imparting you in the next lecture thank you for today have a nice day